Hello everyone. Saint Teresa of Calcutta, commonly known as Mother Teresa, has told many wonderful and inspiring stories. Most of these were derived from her day-to-day -day encounters with the poor. Once a story has stuck with me since I first read it. She says, "One night a man came to our house and told me, there is a family with eight children. They have not eaten for days." I took some food and went. When I finally came to the family, I saw the faces of those little children disfigured by hunger. There was no sorrow or sadness in their faces, just the deep pain of hunger. I gave the food, mostly rice, to the mother. She divided it in two and went out carrying off the food with her. When she came back, I asked her, "Where did you go?" She gave me this simple answer. I went to my neighbor's house, mother. They too are hungry. Friends, speaking of the incident, Teresa says, "I was not surprised that the mother shared the food with her neighbors because most poor people are generous. But I was surprised that she knew her neighbors were hungry. As a rule, when you are suffering, we are so focused on ourselves that we have no time for others." Friends, this is the story of love in action. Today's second reading from the first letter of John addresses this very topic. In our hearts, even in people who have strong faith and belief in God, doubts are bound to arise. Sometimes others point out the gaps between what we believe and how we live and say further that we are acting in ways that are unchristian. Sometimes we may even wonder to ourselves if we are really Christians. Friends, I have known many people who feel so bad and guilty of their sins. They struggle with feeling like they are not good enough. For example, one said to me, "I am such a bad Christian. I can't even keep a commitment to read the Bible every day." Another said, "I am not a good enough Christian for God to use. I am a terrible sinner." Friends, some people live with a misunderstanding that their sins are far greater for God to want to forgive them. Some others have fallen so many times by the same sin that they feel God has given up on them. They feel that since they are never good enough in God's sight, God is withholding his love and grace for them. Some, in spite of knowing intellectually and believing strongly their position in Christ Jesus and God's love for them and that they are forgiven, they feel the weight of shame, condemnation and judgment. In other words, they often feel they are good for nothing. and suffer from a deep sense of inferiority and worthlessness friends the apostle paul has wonderful words of hope and comfort for such people those with excessive feelings of guilt he points out that the punishment for our sins is death but jesus christ has already paid for our sins god no longer condemns us because god loved us so much that he gave us his son Jesus Christ to die for our sins. In other words, Jesus quite literally has already paid for all of our sins and therefore we do not have to condemn ourselves again, nor do we have to pay it again with our life. However, this is entirely different to what self-righteous persons feel about themselves or those who feel that they have no sin at all. and those who feel the need of confessing their sins again and again even though they have already confessed them and been forgiven friends if you are someone who is struggling with self condemnation or if you see yourself as not a good christian because of your sin just like saint paul the words of the saint apostle john from today's second reading can also comfort your troubled heart friends According to John, sin does not and cannot determine the genuineness of a Christian faith, but acts of love. He calls on us therefore to love not in word or in speech, but in deed and truth. Now, this is how we shall know 
that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. In other words, if we show the love of Jesus to others and if our behavior and conduct have been changed and our life is becoming more like Jesus, then we can know that we are of the truth and our claim to be Christian is genuine. Moreover, he says that the feeling of love for fellow human beings reassures our hearts that we are in the presence of God. Sometimes our hearts may condemn us, but God is greater than our hearts and He knows everything about us. That is to say, God not only knows our sins, but also our love, remorse and repentance for our sin and efforts to change our life. Hence, when we confess our sins, we are given full forgiveness of our sins. Friends, John further says, If our hearts do not condemn us, that is, when we have a clear conscience and when we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in God's sight, we can have greater confidence in him and can expect all our prayers to be heard and answered. Lastly, the apostle reminds us of the most important commandment of God, that is, we must believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ, that is, believing in the nature and character of Jesus Christ, and we must love one another just as Jesus has commanded us, that is, we must love one another with the same selfless, sacrificial, forgiving love with which Jesus Christ loves us. Amen. God bless you.